The army had to be called to a hospital after patients were attacking the staff. The army in Canada says that their sleeping bags aren't suitable for the cold weather. And a German woman ends her 10-year-long relationship with an airplane. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a dude in a closet. The army had to be called to protect an Italian hospital staff after a spate of attacks. A spate, S-P-A-T-E. I think it means a bunch of, but I'm not really sure because I'm I'm public school educated. Doctors and nurses unions in Italy have called for authorities to bring the army into hospitals in response to an increase in in attacks by the patients and their relatives that has provoked some outrage across the country. Let's learn Why are they attacking the hospital staff? What's going on over there? In one of the latest attacks captured on video and widely shared on social media, doctors and nurses were forced to barricade themselves in a room at the Policlinicio. Policlinicio? Policlinicio? Policlinicio. I really want to say this one. It's a fun one. I cannot do it. I'm just going to give up. I can say the city it's in, though. Foggia. It's in the southern region of Puglia. Yeah, once in a while I get those right. This all happened on Friday after about 50 relatives and friends of a 23-year-old lady died after an emergency operation. So these people turned on the medical staff. Some healthcare workers were injured severely with bloodstains visible on the emergency room door. Oh my goodness, this is shocking. And as if that wasn't enough, two days later, the same hospital reported another attack with a patient kicking and punching three emergency room nurses. Then on Tuesday, also in Puglia, a doctor was assaulted by a patient at the Francesco Ferrari Hospital in Casarano near Lecce. Oh, I nailed all those ones. They were kind of easy, though. We can all say Ferrari. Two other physical attacks were reported this week in the province of Napoli, where health workers said patients and their families turned on emergency room doctors after being asked to wait their turn. Oh, boy. We also have here in August in Palermo, a family member of a patient punched a volunteer at the Termini Imeresi Hospital. It's out of control over there in Italy. I wonder what's uh, the cause of all this. We're all tense. There's a lot of tension going on in the world because the world is a shit show, in case you don't know. Yeah, I've decided the world is a shit show. (laughs) And we're all on edge because it's a shit show and we have no idea how to handle it. And so we're taking it out on airline employees, hospital employees. It's It's a tough way. It's a tough go right now. I'm not saying we should do this. I'm just saying this is how it's manifesting itself. Just be thankful in Italy not everybody's walking around with a gun like they are in the U.S. because, you know, they would have shot up this hospital staff in the U.S. That's what would have happened because everybody in my country is solving their their tension problems with guns, uh, apparently. Uh, We got an interview with someone named Antonio De Palma, who's the national president of the nursing union. He said he was shocked at the surge in violence. Here's a quote from Antonio De Palma. He probably talks like this. In the past 10 years, such an escalation of brutality had never been documented before. Eh? We've never reached such a level of danger, such a level of aggressiveness. We urgently call on the Minister of the Interior to address the seriousness of the situation. It has become imperative to consider deploying the army in the healthcare facilities. We can no longer wait. We can no longer wait for the army. Send the army. Now, in case you're wondering how serious the situation is, the Italian Federation of Medical Scientific Societies, also known as FISM, reported more than 1,600 verbal and physical attacks against doctors and nurses in Italian hospitals in 2023 alone. Last year, a 62-year-old man was sentenced to 16 years in prison for murdering a doctor in 2022 with an axe outside of the... <laughs> the same hospital. <laughs> outside of the... <laughs> because this, this man was mad. He claimed the treatments he had been prescribed by the doctor were useless oh now look you you feel helpless when uh, your doctors can't even fix what's going on with you i 
I can empathize, but you cannot be killing medical staff, man, with an axe. There's just no... Even verbal assaults need to be curbed. It's not okay, you know? And just a heads up, it ain't going to get any easier. It's going to be more and more frustrating. There's not enough doctors and medical staff now to handle what's going down. And the baby boomers are just going to stress the system even more over the next 15 years or so all over the world. So, yeah, this is what's going to happen, man. These people are on their last legs and they need pills and they need massages and they need people to look at their uh, their moles and test them. Just get used to it, guys. The world is out of sorts. It's only going to get worse. Everything's on fire. The Great Barrier Reef is dying. And I have microplastics in my balls. So just eat cake, eat pie, hit the vape, have a good time. It kind of rhymed. The Canadian Army says new military sleeping bags are not suitable for a Canadian winter. Uh, today I learned that Canada has an army. I had no clue you guys had an army. Good for you, Canada. I don't know what you got that army for. It's, it's, I can't imagine anybody invading Canada anytime soon. But whatever, you got to keep your people in shape somehow. And, you know, there's money to be spent somewhere. So, but maybe maybe get some sleeping bags that are appropriate for a Canadian winter, you know. But let's keep reading. Let's find out. Maybe they're having a budget cuts here or something. Or maybe there isn't a sleeping bag in existence that's suitable for a typical Canadian winter. Although with global warming, I'd say just wait five years. You'll be okay. The article says here, despite the Defense Department spending more than $35 million on new sleeping bags, the Canadian Army asked that hundreds of soldiers headed to a joint northern exercise in Alaska with the Americans be issued with old 1960s vintage bedrolls. I don't know what a 1960s vintage bedroll is, but I'd imagine if you're spending $35 million on sleeping bags, they probably should be your solution. And you shouldn't have to add anything to it. I don't know. I don't know much about sleeping bag technology, though. Uh, troops who had used the recently issued general purpose sleeping bag system late last fall in a preparatory exercise found several critical issues, according to a briefing. More than 350 soldiers belonging to the 3rd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. <laughs> they sound deadly. <laughs> Don't mess with us. We're the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Go get them! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a funny name for a, for a battalion. Princess Patricia's Battalion. You don't want to mess with Princess Patricia's Battalion. <laughs> I tell you, if, I, if I'm going to be a prisoner of war, I want to be captured by the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. They probably bake you cookies while you're there. <laughs> While you're there. <laughs> oh, Canada, you always make me laugh. Oh, okay, so the uh, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry uh, spent several days training for northern operations, and apparently they were, they were too cold. As you can imagine, Princess Patricia's Light Infantry would probably easily feel cold <laughs> and uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, okay, so they <laughs> the temperatures during the deployment, though, let's give them credit. It ranged from... Minus 5 degrees Celsius during the day to minus 20 at night. That's pretty unbearable. Uh, the critical issues discovered by the soldiers the soldiers related to a lack of warmth with their new sleeping bags was the briefing noted. Have you guys tried two soldiers, one bag, that method? I'd imagine the um, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry would be uh, totally cool with two soldiers, one sleeping bag method. A little bit of a nut-to-butt action maybe. Yeah, yeah, two people in one bag, you know, also also, also known as the Twix or the Double Double. Yeah, that's how you keep warm. Bodies upon bodies. Can't you just double up sleeping bags? I think you can. Uh, did you tell the uh, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry to wear their Snuggies in the sleeping bag? I'm sure they all got be a lovely light blue Snuggies over there. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I can't help myself here. It says, now, during the training exercises, the soldiers in Princess Patricia's Light Infantry reported that even though they used both the inner and the outer shells of the sleeping bags, and they slept in tents with, with heated stoves, they were still quite frigid. It's still cold! Now, it says here, the liberal government has placed renewed emphasis on defending Canada's Arctic 
and the uh, recent defense policy update promised a series of new equipment purchases for cold weather operations. Specifically, the policy promised to acquire new vehicles adapted to ice, snow, and tundra. However, it says here several soldiers who contacted the media with complaints about these sleeping bags, these lame-ass sleeping bags, said they're very skeptical about all of the promises that have been made to help them defend the Canada's Arctic. Are people just trying to invade the Canada's Arctic? I'm very surprised. What do they want up there? I guess as the ice melt, there's probably some resources in there, would you say? Probably some oil, you know, f some gold frozen under there. Maybe there's some gold frozen under there. Woolly mammoth tusks are pretty valuable on the market from my understanding. Probably some pretty cool dinosaur skeletons under there too. They want all these resources. They need them. But, you know, sadly, they're just not prepared to uh, defend their Arctic territories with these uh, this lame sleeping bag. So beware, United States. Canadian soldiers are probably going to start prepping to invade our warmer country, not because they want to, but because they have to, to survive the long frigid nights. Now, we don't really have to be nervous, I don't think, about the invasion of Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry whatsoever. They're probably harmless. They seem... I'm sure they're a lot of fun. Sound like a crew that you can go have a lovely night of karaoke with. A woman ended her 10-year-long relationship with an airplane. Well, anyone else not surprised that this didn't take off? <laughs> I mean, come on. You could see this coming. Uh, it's, I'm sure it was very turbulent... You know, a lot of ups and downs in this relationship. And, um, you know, these things, just, you can't just wing them, you know? You got to take this kind of stuff seriously. But, you know, when you're getting into a relationship with an airplane, there's probably a lot of baggage. So, you know, you got to... <laughs> Guys, the puns. Come on now. Come on. Jonesy up top of this segment, just laying them out. <sighs> Guys, come for the news. Stay for the terrible puns and dad jokes. Weird AF news. What can I say? Let's get into the story about this... Uh, this heartbroken woman who unfortunately had to end her relationship with an airplane. I am familiar with this woman because I covered a story about her getting into a relationship with an airplane. I've covered stories about women, uh, you know, marrying bridges, having relationships with skyscrapers. One lady married a roller coaster, which sounds crazy, but I mean, you can kind of empathize. Have you ever ridden like a really good roller coaster? You know, that'll do some things to your body that a, a human cannot do. So I can understand some, some of this stuff. I don't want to chalk it all up, up to pathology. Yeah, let's let's give her the benefit of the doubt. It's, it's a sexy ass plane to begin with. You know, the 737. Have you seen one of these things? The nose on this thing. Oh, this will drive you wild. This woman is German, by the way, and her, her last name seems very hard to pronounce. It's, I think it's Kubke? Kubke? Kubke. Kubke. Something like that. Kubke. And I don't even know if that's her first or last name. It just says Kubke's relationship with the airplane is an example of what's called objectophilia. This is a rare phenomenon where individuals develop romantic or sexual feelings towards objects. Psychologist Bjorn who recently discussed objectophilia on some program, explained that those with this condition often experience a form of communication with the object, making the relationship feel like a very meaningful exchange. All right, so that's just to give you a little layout of what the condition is. Uh, Kubke, Kubke, Kubke has openly shared her feelings, describing how she first fell in love with this Boeing 737. Boarding the aircraft overwhelmed her with emotions and her most memorable moment came when she visited a hangar and kissed the airplane. She once expressed hopes of marrying the plane, declaring, quote, I am simply different and stand for my love for my 737. <laughs> However, despite her devotion, Kupka recently revealed that the relationship had come to an end due to the physical distance between the two of them. Yeah, I mean, how are you going to have a relationship with an airplane? These things are very distant. They're flying all over the place. I mean, it just makes it very hard to like count on your airplane to to be faithful. They they really get around, and perhaps she caught this plane on only planes, trying to sell some of those sexy wing picks. You know how they do these planes. Can't trust them. Also, yeah, hard to have a relationship with an airplane due to what I would imagine would be very high medical bills as a result of the uh, the damage from the plane sex, which uh, is probably going to hurt. 
Yeah. Now, the article wraps up by saying, Kipke stressed in a recent interview that she and the plane are going to remain friends. They've decided to remain friends. It's just, but we're just going to be better as platonic. It's going to be platonic with the plane. Wow, guys, there are aviation enthusiasts, and then there's this lady. <laughs> but hey, man, make yourself happy. I'm not going to judge. It's a shit show. So if loving a plane makes you happy, go out and love a plane. Make yourself happy. Who am I to deny her her happiness? Or maybe she's moving on to a, to a drone. You know, drones drones seem a little bit more manageable. They're easier to control. You can control them yourself. So we wish her luck and happiness in life. Everybody deserves to be happy in life. Remember that, guys. And I'll just say this before I hang up the phone. Uh, now that she's single, sky's the limit. <laughs> Let's rock. Save it for later. Save it for later. Do this happen. Anyone know that song? What is that song? I'm, I'm, I don't even think I'm saying it correctly. Something like that. It goes something like a little bit something like this. How are you, anyways? How was your weekend? I hope it was good and dandy and swell and sweet and that nothing disastrous happened to your face. I want your face to stay intact and be pretty, pretty and smooth. I wish you all good skin. How about that? Have you tried Korean products? They seem to work. Anyways, um, I'm, on, I'm in a, a strange mood, as you can see. I had a lovely weekend doing shows here up in the Bay. It's all winding down, though, as I'll be going home tomorrow, back down to hot Southern California. I've been freezing my ass up here in San Francisco. I have to tell you, it is cold. It is very cold up here. I don't know why people live here. I just, I'm very surprised. What's that saying? I think Mark Twain said it. My, the coldest winter I ever experienced was that summer in San Francisco. It's a very funny, witty quote. And uh, if if it if it is if I mis uh, attributed it to Mr. Twain, I apologize to the original um, poster. Poster. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's give thanks and praise, by the way. Thanks and praise. Uh, last night I did a show in San Jose and I met a couple of listeners. Um, Dan came to the show and uh, Dee Dee. Well, I'm not going to say her name. I think she wants to remain um, anonymous, but she goes by Dee Dee on the social medias. And they both came to the show and they, they were so lovely. And I had, had an amazing time chatting with them. And it's just it's just awesome to meet listeners. The show was pretty good too, so that was that was fun. Pretty good show. It was a uh, it was a fun funny little bar lounge. It 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 had the vibes of a uh, I don't know a vampire sex dungeon if I was going to describe it. Some <laughs> a lot of leather and um, I think the wallpaper was made of red red and black velvet. It seemed it was kind of weird, but anyways, I had a great time, and I had uh, overall an amazing time up here in the bay doing shows. Those of you who uh, who came out, there wasn't too many of you, but those of you who did, I just want to thank you so much. Uh, it's always just a great time to meet listeners and people that support me, you know, and to have you know some cocktails and just chat it up, it's chat it up, take some photos. I'll post these photos, by the way, that I took last night on the Patreon and pr- maybe on Instagram or something, so you can you can see the people. Um, anyways, I- I'm running out of things to say. I uh, I got some shows this weekend in SoCal. Check out my Instagram to follow that, at Funny Jones. The, th- the Thursday show's a big headlining gig at a really cool brewery, and I can't remember this, the the city, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I post that. So if you're down there, that's probably the one you want to hit up. That'll be good. Breweries are so fun. I just love me some breweries. And then when I do a show at a brewery, guess who drinks for free? Yeah, so that's always a good time. That's a little. That's just a little bit extra, extra. Anyways, if you want to support the show because you're rich, bitch, please go to weirdafnews.com. And uh, over there, you can buy Jonesy a coffee to keep me caffeinated so I sound insane like this all the time that I'm recording. Or you can join the Patreon as well, which is really cool. Patreon's the best. You get extra weird content that I put in there, and you get to meet a lot of other weirdos that are just just special fans of the show, which is lovely as well. All right, take care of yourself, and good luck with your life, man.